so much. Uh, hey, I'm excited to be with you th uh, here this morning to share on a Sunday. I think Dale said it uh, appropriately. The Spirit of God is here this morning. He's, he's here. He's moving. He has something uh, that he wants to say uh, to us in this place. And I'm excited uh, to just be a small part of what God is doing uh, in New Hope and in this place this morning, what he's going to do in this place uh, this morning. But I don't know about you. Christmas time is my favorite time of the year. It's my absolute favorite time of the year. You want to know why? Because I love snow, right? Who got so excited about the snow flurries yesterday, right? Come on. I was on my knees saying, God, let it be 30 inches. Let just 30 inches of snow close it all in. I love snow. I love Christmas. I love everything about it. And Pastor Weaver gave me some jokes uh, about snow to share with you this morning. So, uh, you know what? I just felt like we should all experience these together uh, because misery loves company. You know what I'm saying? So here we go. What, do, I don't know if he wrote these or he found these, praise God. What do snowmen eat for lunch? Ice burgers. That's good. I think he wrote that one. Uh, all right. Why did Frosty's girlfriend break up with him? Because he was a total flake. I wrote that one. It's fine. <laughs> he said, no, you did. Uh, two more. What's everyone's, or excuse me, what's every parent's favorite Christmas carol? Silent Night. <laughs> Praise God. Last one. What do you call a snowman with a six pack? The abdominal snowman. Get it? Abdominal, not abominable. That's good. Man, thank you, Pastor Weaver. Can we give it up one more time, Pastor Weaver, and his jokes? Should write a book. Should write a book. Christmas time is the greatest time of the year, and it's because the entire world and our entire nation uh, focuses on a few certain things during this time, and that is peace, joy, hope, kindness. And what they don't understand is all of those things are uh, uh, explanations of who Jesus is. And though we understand and we know we celebrate this baby that was born in a manger all those years ago, this is our moment to tell the world everything that you're looking for this Christmas season, the joy, the hope, the peace, the kindness, the snow, it all comes from Jesus. Amen? Amen? It is truly the most wonderful time of the year. And this morning, we're going to continue our series, The Perfect Gift, uh, talking about uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, uh, about the names of Jesus. Yeah. And these are the names that the prophet Isaiah outlines for us uh, that Jesus will be called, the Messiah will be called. And so last week, Pastor Jeff, he talked about how Jesus is our wonderful counselor expressed here and now through his Holy Spirit who's living inside of the hearts of all believers. And uh, matter of fact, let's just read our, our main text, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It says this, for a child is born to us, a son is given. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. So I got one main point this morning, and that is this. Jesus is our Mighty God. Jesus is our Mighty God. The definition of the word mighty, it says possessing great and impressive power or strength. And under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Isaiah prophesies that this baby, this child to be born, he will be called mighty God. And what that means is that he will possess within himself all power and all strength, impressive power, impressive strength. That's who Jesus is. Within himself, Jesus possesses all power and all strength because he is fully God. And at the same time, he's fully man. So not only does he possess power and strength, but he experienced everything that we experience. And he, he gave us the perfect example to follow on how to live with a mighty God. There has never been anyone like him in the entire course of human history, and there never will be again. Jesus is our mighty God. 
Jesus is the incarnate word of God through whom all things were created and for whom all things were created. Jesus is the light of the world that stepped down into the darkness and brokenness of humanity as the mighty savior of the world. Jesus is the mighty God who set his people free from 400 years of slavery in Egypt and led them through the wilderness and the cloud during the day and the fire by night. He's the mighty God who closed the mouths of lions in the den to save Daniel from being harmed. And he's the same mighty God that showed up in the middle of the fire with the three Hebrew boys that kept them from being burned and even smelling like smoke. Jesus is the mighty God. Jesus is our mighty God. And so when the angel showed up and told Mary, you will give birth to a son, As the Hebrew that she was, her mind would come back. It would be drawn back to this prophecy from Isaiah. But church, we live on the other side of history. And so we know that not only was he mighty in the Old Testament, but Jesus is the mighty God who raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus is the mighty God who opens blind eyes. Jesus is the mighty God who heals. Jesus is the mighty God who took five loaves and two fish and fed the multitude. Let us not forget who we believe in this morning. Let us not forget who this baby is that we celebrate at this time of year every year. Let us not get so caught up and distracted by the problems surrounding us that we forget that Isaiah said he shall be called mighty God. He shall be called mighty God. He did not say that he has the potential to be all powerful and almighty, but we're just going to have to wait and see how he turns out. No, he didn't say that. Isaiah prophesied we are to call him mighty God because that's who he was back then. That's who he's going to be in the future. And therefore, that's who he needs to be in our lives right here and right now in this moment. Church, who is the mighty God to you? Who is your mighty God? Is it Jesus? Or is it someone or something else that you've built up in your own life? Who is your mighty God? Personally, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is the mighty God who saved my soul, who rescued me from death, hell, and the grave, who brought me into life, but he's also the mighty God who is alive and active in this place and in my life right here and right now. Can I tell you some stories about who the mighty God is to me? To me, Jesus is the mighty God who heals. Some of you don't know this, but in summer of 2014, Pastor Zach and I, we were both interns here at this church. I interned with Pastor Brian, and he interned with Pastor Jesse, uh, who is no longer with us here. He is alive, though, right? (laughs) Love Pastor Jesse. In summer 2014, we were interns here, and and we had a great summer. We did a lot of fun things, and then we went to camp, and camp is always the best week of the year, you know. And while we were at camp, I, for whatever reason, started to develop bruises all over my body. From the neck down, just random bruises all over my body. And I remember showing Pastor Brian, and he's like, yeah, dude, that doesn't look good. (laughs) I said, thanks, Pastor Ryan, you're so helpful. He said, you may want to go talk to the nurse about it. And so I went and talked to the nurses at camp who are fantastic people. And they said, oh, you should be fine. I said, all right, cool, sweet, thanks. That was like on Tuesday. By Thursday, man, they were big and they just covered my entire torso. And Pastor Brian said, I think you need to call your mom. And so I called my mom and I told her what was going on. And this was Thursday and we were leaving the next day. And she said, well, uh, I'm not going to drive the six hours up and six hours back. So ride the bus home and I will take you to the ER once you get home. And I said, all right, sounds good. I felt fine. My mom loves me. Okay, that was not, (laughs) she loves me. (laughs) So I rode the bus home and, and my mom came and picked me up from church and and I showed, her, I showed her my body and she said, yeah, we're going to the ER right now. And so we, we rushed to the emergency room and my dad showed up uh, at the emergency room and, and uh, uh, they were doing tests and they were talking to us and they were asking me like, well, were you in any crazy activities? Like, were you like where people could hit you and things like that? Like, no, we're at church camp, okay? <laughs> like, I wasn't, I'm not an MMA fighter, all right? And it was middle school camp. So I wasn't about to fight a bunch of middle schoolers, okay? And they're like, okay, you know, we, we need to take a blood test. 
I said, all right. And so they took a blood test and I'm sitting in the emergency room with my mom and dad and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting. And the doctor comes in with, with nurses and their faces are just white, somber, sad. And they said, your blood test came back and, and we're not specialists by any means, but the numbers they teach us, that means cancer. And the bruises all over your body, it's a telltale sign of cancer. And I said, no, it can't be cancer. That's what it says. So, so your next steps are you have to go see a cancer specialist and they're gonna have to run a bunch of tests and they're gonna have to tell you more in depth, but you need to get in there as soon as possible. So this was Friday night. So uh, we called the, the cancer specialist that they referred us to and, and he, he scheduled an, uh, uh, an appointment for me on the following Thursday. And I'm like, man, he said we needed to get in there quick and, and this cancer specialist, I'm sorry, this is, this is when I'm available. So Thursday, all week long, I'm, I'm freaking out. My family's praying, my mom, my dad are praying. Praise God for an amazing youth pastor who gave me the week off of the internship, you know what I'm saying? And he said, he said August, we're gonna pray for you on Wednesday night. And I said, okay, and that youth group on Wednesday night, they prayed for me. And, and my family prayed for me and my friends were praying for me. And Thursday, we go to see the cancer specialist and um, my wife, Carissa, we were just dating at the time. She came down because uh, they made it, they were like, this is very serious. And so I said, this may be it, babe, I don't know. So she, so she comes down and she goes to the cancer specialist with us and, and we're sitting in there and, and they draw my blood Thursday morning. And we're sitting there and we're waiting and, and and everything, and the doctor comes walking into the office after uh, they had run the labs and they had run the test on the blood, and, and nonchalantly he goes, yeah, you're good. <laughs> I said, excuse me? He said, yeah, I don't, yeah, you're fine. Your, your blood's perfect. I said, what do you mean? But the, they told me that my blood hit every marker that it was supposed to for cancer. He goes, yeah, see, sometimes when they draw blood in the emergency room, they'll hold the vial in their hand in just a perfect way that they'll squeeze it too hard and they'll be just the perfect distance away from the lab. And so when they walk to the lab, squeezing the vial of blood too hard, it'll give us a weird reading. And it's just, you know, so it's just one of those things. And my mom is sitting there like, you don't know my God. You don't know the people that were praying for this boy. You don't know the people that laid hands on him. You don't know the mighty God that I know. His name is Jesus and he healed my son. I said, mom, you don't need to yell at the doctor, it's fine. <laughs> and just a week later, I remember seeing a post on, on Facebook of one of my professors who had a wife who exhibited the same exact, the same exact symptoms as I did. And a, 16 months after her first symptoms, she passed away from the same exact cancer that they told me I had. Praise God, she was a believer. Praise God, she's in heaven. But I know my mighty God, Jesus Christ, is a God who heals. And I'm here to tell you today that he healed me and he can heal you too. If you need that, if you need that, you can have a moment to respond to him this morning because he is a mighty God who cares about you, who loves you, who wants to do a miracle in your life, and he will meet you in this place this morning. He's the mighty God who heals that's who he is to me. But number two, he's the mighty God who saves souls and delivers people. My dad, my mom and dad, when, uh, when I was a little kid, he, uh, my parents came to faith in Jesus. My mom had been raised in church. Her father was a pastor, but she had her moment of not being in church. And when my mom and dad got together, they came back to faith in Jesus. And my dad, uh, he was a smoker. He smoked cigarettes and he had been uh, praying for a while. I, I just don't, I want to quit. I don't want to smoke anymore. It's just something that I don't want to do. It's, it's a habit that I don't want. It's a desire that I don't want anymore. And he had been praying and he had been praying. And Saturday, there was a Saturday night uh, conference at my grandfather's church. My grandpa uh, was a pastor down in West Des Moines and 
And my dad was running the soundboard for this conference. He was in the sound booth. And uh, my dad invited his childhood best friend, uh, who wasn't a believer at the time, to come to this conference with him. Uh, and so he came, and, and my dad was sitting in the sound booth. And so my dad's best friend sat with him uh, in the sound booth. And, and they listened to this message to this guest speaker on this Saturday night. And, and uh, this, this childhood best friend of my dad, uh, he had a moment with Jesus. And now my mom and dad are at odds with each other on if he responded to the altar, if he responded to Jesus back in the sound booth. But uh, this, this man, he prayed a prayer in his mind. And he said, Jesus, if you're real, if, you, if all of this is true, if everything I'm hearing about you is real, then I want you to help my friend Mark quit smoking because he's wanted to quit smoking for a long time. Now he prayed that prayer in his head. My dad didn't know it. Sunday morning comes. My dad calls his best friend and says, you know what? I think I'm gonna quit smoking. And his best friend's like, oh, whoa. <laughs> Monday comes. My dad had to go to Fort Dodge for work and he said he's in Fort Dodge all day. He didn't smoke a single cigarette. He, he was com completely didn't, didn't do it at all. Drives home from Fort Dodge, gets to our house, and he says, you know what? I'm gonna try one cigarette. And he told me this, I asked him yesterday because I wanted to make sure I got the story right. He said, I took two puffs of that cigarette and I got sicker than I've ever been in my entire life that I threw all of them away and I've never smoked again. He's the God who delivers from desires. He's the God who delivers from habits, but he's also the God who is mighty to save the soul of the non-believer who would come and seek him, who would turn in repentance and seek him because that best friend of my dad is still following Jesus to this day because God did a miracle in my dad's life, but he did a greater miracle in that man's life to save his soul from death and to bring him into et eternal life. My mighty God is Jesus Christ, the mighty God who saves souls and delivers people. Who is the mighty God to you this morning? I've got one final story. He's the mighty God who provides. He's the mighty God who provides. My grandparents operated a daycare uh, out of their church. And my grandma would, would oversee the daycare and, and she was just a saint. And she would let anybody come to the daycare, any kid, whether they could, their parents could pay or not, if their parents needed to drop them off somewhere, bring them to the daycare. Bring them to the daycare, it doesn't matter. If they can't afford it, if they can't pay for daycare, it doesn't matter, bring them to the daycare. I'll watch them, I'll take care of them, I'll love on your kids. And I remember a time where there was 200 kids at this daycare. It's not legal, okay? <laughs> but by the grace of God, it happened. <laughs> And my grandma was loving on all these kids and they had uh, teachers and all the things, but all of these extra kids who couldn't pay. And, and I remember it was, it was payday and I was, I was probably in middle school at this time and my grandma said, I have to pay the workers, but I don't have enough money to buy groceries for the kids at the daycare and pay the workers, but I have to pay the workers. And I said, well, I feel like feeding these kids is far more important than paying the workers. She said, no, I'm going to pay the workers. I'm going to pay the tithe and then God is going to provide. And I said, grandma, it's a Tuesday. We're gonna be out of groceries by 3 p.m. this afternoon. Everybody's coming back on Wednesday. She said, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna pay the workers. I'm gonna pay the tithe and God will provide. And so she did. And that Wednesday morning, this was over the summer, I used to stay with my grandparents all the time. That Wednesday morning, I woke up, and my grandma, we woke up and we walked from their house to the building that the daycare was run out of. And we were just walking and my grandma was praying and she stopped and she said, do you see that? I said, what? And I looked and on the corner of the property, right over the fence from the sidewalk and the road, there were bags of groceries just sitting there. And we walked over and I helped my grandma carry all these groceries inside the daycare. And it was enough groceries to feed 200 kids that day. 
And then on Thursday, we woke up and we walked outside and there were groceries sitting in the same spot. And it was enough groceries to feed 200 kids that day. And then on Friday, we woke up and we walked to the daycare and there were groceries sitting in the same spot. And there was enough food to feed 200 kids that day because my mighty God is the God who provides. Through it all, if we would be obedient to him, he'll provide it all. (laughs) Worship team, you can come. He is our mighty God. Jesus is our mighty God. And I know that for some of you, what you're going through seems like it's going to overtake you. But I need you to know who Jesus is, and I need you to know what Jesus said. In John chapter 16, verse 33, he says, Here on earth, you're going to experience trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. There are times where the might of God is put on display in our lives by rescuing us out of the situation and in a moment. But I've learned that there are times Uh, even more times than not that the might and power of God is put on display in our hearts as he walks with us through the trials and through the sorrows. If we would be obedient, if we would trust the Lord, there's a story that I heard from a preacher one time about passengers who were on a ship in the middle of a severe storm and they were in imminent danger of sinking. And the passengers were whispering to each other, are we going down? Are we safe? One passenger said, I I have to go find out if we're going to survive this storm. And so he makes it topside and he walks across the deck to the pilot house where the pilot of the ship had his hand firmly on the wheel. The pilot turned and saw the fear in the passenger's face and just smiled at him. Not even speaking a word. On arriving back below the deck, the once fearful passenger exclaimed, we're going to be all right. I've seen the face of the pilot and he smiled at me. I've seen the face of the captain and he smiled at me. Have you seen the face of Jesus? Have you seen the face of your mighty God and received assurance that everything is going to be okay as long as you put your trust in him? Family, he's not just the captain of the ship. He's the Lord of the wind and the waves. He's the mighty God who calms storms with one word from his mouth. He's the mighty God who weeps when with those who weep. He's the mighty God who mourns with those who mourn. He's the mighty God who meets us right in the middle of what we're going through and walks us through to the other side. He is the mighty God. In just a few moments, we're going to open these altars. And if you need a reminder of who Jesus is, then I invite you to come. If you need a reminder of who our mighty God is, if you need to look upon the face of the one who's defeated the enemy of our souls and stands in might and power above it all, then I invite you to come to the altars in just a moment this morning. Jesus is the mighty God who works wonders, but he's also the mighty God who saves our souls. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, starting in verse 6, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we were still his enemies, he will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends with God. While we were enemies of God, in his power and in his might, the Father sent his son, the Father sent his son to give him the might and power to lay down his life for us. The most powerful thing that has ever happened was Jesus laying down his life for us. Though he was God, Philippians 2, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave. He was born as a human being. And when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. 
therefore God elevated him to a place of highest honor, gave him the name above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Church, who is the mighty God to you this morning? Who is the mighty God to you this morning? We can never forget that Jesus Christ is that God. He is the mighty God who possesses all power and all strength and in his might and in his power, he laid down his life and took up our sins to save our souls. And in his might and in his power, God raised him back from the dead. And he is alive and he is here right now. And when he saves our souls, when Jesus saves our souls, he changes us to be like him. He gives us his heart for people. He is the mighty God who does miraculous wonders, but he's also the mighty God who works inside of us so that we can love the people who are unlovable. So that we can love the no good, dirty, rotten, worst of the worst because we were once them ourselves. He is the mighty God who gives us the ability to forgive those who don't deserve our forgiveness. He is the mighty God who changes us from the inside out so that we can be his light to a broken and dying world, people filled with all hope and love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and everything else. He is the mighty God who changes our hearts. Would you stand with me this morning? As we close our time together, if you're here, and you need to have an encounter with Jesus Christ, the mighty God, then I invite you in just a moment to come to this altar and meet him right here. If you're here this morning and you need to remind yourself that Jesus is the mighty God, and therefore you need to relinquish some control of a situation, a relationship or something, maybe even your life, when I pray, would you come to the altar? Would you have your moment with Jesus? You may be here today and you've never had a relationship with Jesus before. And this morning you wanna meet Jesus for the very first time. If that's you, I, would, I personally would love and our pastors would love to introduce you to Jesus this morning. So will you come? Will you meet me or another pastor right over here so that we can pray with you and we can introduce you to Jesus? Church, if you need a miracle in this place this morning, if you need a miracle, come respond to Jesus at the altar this morning. If you need a healing in your body, you need healing in a relationship, you need a change of perspective, you need a financial miracle, you need to be delivered from a habit, from an addiction, uh, you just need to, uh, you need to be delivered from a stronghold, you need to meet Jesus. I invite you, come to the altar this morning. Lord, I pray over every person in this house. God, I pray that you would work in their hearts, that you you would be speaking to them this morning, that you would move in their hearts, that you would change their lives, God, that all of us would be people who respond to your voice, who respond to your call. God, I know that there's so many of us who are going through the craziest storms in life, and we need to remember, we need to focus, we need to know that you are the mighty God of all creation. God, I pray this morning, Lord, that you would do what all this morning, Jesus, we love you. Would you come? Would you respond to him this morning? Moving in our